Hey there, and welcome to this video about batch processing. So right off the bat here, why should we use batch processing? Well, it's a technique that we can use in Java and also other programming languages to run multiple SQL statements in an efficient way. Uh, so we don't need to create each SQL statement and execute it individually. But I think it's going to be the best way if we create a project and actually build some code. So we are inside NetBeans. I'm going to code this in Java. And we are using SQL Server. We have a database called UserDB. We have a uh, table, user, rather simple, ID, primary key, username, and password. And sometimes you need to insert uh, a lot of data at the same time. And batch processing is really good for that. So let's see. Let's create a new project. First, we're just going to create uh, a normal standard Java console application. Batch demo, let's call it that. So we get some boilerplate code here. And let's remove the header. Yep. So first, I'm going to add a small library because I need to interface to the database. So I need to use uh, the JDBC driver for MSSQL. And you can download this from Microsoft website. If you search for uh, JDBC driver for SQL Server, this site comes up and you can select the appropriate driver for your version of Java. So that is the newest version. So we select this JAR file and we have the driver set up. So the next thing is that we should create a small class that will hold the database communication. And it's not going to be a big deal here. Call this DB connection, new Java class. I just copied the content from uh, from my project so we don't have the... Uh, it's not going to take so much time to type the code actually. And this is just a small utility class that will connect to the database. We have uh, the address for the database. It's running on localhost and we have the database called user db we have a username and password and then we basically have a function that will connect and return the connection to us so let's go back to our main file here our main function so the first thing is we should make a try block with a connection so we're going to use db connection get connection and it's going to say we need to import the connection. Now it's going to say that we need to mark this as throw exception. If I can type correctly here. Yep. We should probably also have a catch statement there. So we can actually catch any error. And then we should probably print the stack trace if we get an error. And let's see. So usually, if we're going to insert a new user into our database, we want to create a prepared statement because this is the most secure compared to the normal statement. So we do prepare oh, prepare a statement right here, and we type the SQL command insert into user values yep and we're putting in these placeholders so that we are able to compile the SQL statement and reuse it so it's going to be faster than compared to the normal statement All right so then we would do statement set string the first parameter that is the username and the second one here yep this is the password and then we need to execute the app execute update so it's going to run the statement this is all good uh, except we only do one SQL statement so if we need to do a hundred uh, it will be a little annoying that we need to either copy this code or we need to probably need to make a, f a loop 
that could be one way because if we need to do this maybe 1000 times then we can see that if we take the code and put it inside of a for loop we're actually doing this 1000 times and we're uh, calling the execute update each time that this means essentially that we're sending a request 1000 times to the database and you don't really have control of this number it's it can be a, a lot of uh, requests all right so we change this to 100 and we should probably do a little bit dynamic stuff here where we're inserting the counter so we can see the actual username and the password for this so if we run this code what will happen so we can see build successful three seconds if we check the database we can see that we have now 100 users but still uh, we're sending 100 requests to the database it is not optimal because it is a big load on the network uh, all these requests a better way because sometimes you might need to do 100,000 maybe or more so that could be a problem to send this amount of request to the database so this is where we can use batched processing so we basically call at batch instead of execute update and then outside the for loop we do statement execute batch so let's have a look if we do this 100 times so we can see that maybe there is no real uh, difference in time right now but if you if we add this up to maybe 10,000 then it will be more efficient and we're going to impact the network much less than if we use the normal execute update so we can see that it takes six seconds to actually insert 10,000 elements into the database Oop. so now we have a lot of rows in the database yeah so that's basically how you use a batch statement I hope you can make this work. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.